Hey, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net and in this video, I'm going to show you why split stepping in tennis is so important. Please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. Even share this video with a friend as those are the best ways to support this channel. All right, split stepping, you may have heard of it, you may have not, and no problem. I'm going to explain what it is and why you need to do it. A split step is a little hop you make as your opponent is hitting the ball and you're going to make that hop every single time they hit. There are exceptions where maybe in a match, Serena Williams won't split step two times, right? But the other 99.9% .9 of the time, she is split stepping as all pros and everyone can split step. It doesn't matter what level you are, you should be split stepping as your opponent hits. The split step gives you two things. One, it's a braking mechanism, right? You don't wanna be moving as your opponent's hitting, right? If you're moving as your opponent's hitting, what if you're moving in the wrong direction? Right, so you don't want to be moving as your opponent hits because you've got to be ready to move in 360 degrees. You don't know where you're going to have to go to get your opponent shot. And second, when you split step and you're, you're stationary, it then allows you to explode quickly and in a straight line in the direction you need to go to get that ball. So in a second here, I'm going to show you two scenarios in a high-level college singles match, uh, Stanford versus Cal and two very similar situations with drastically different outcomes because one of the players split steps and one of the players does not split step. Let me, show, let me diagram this for a second and then I'll show you those, those points. I would say that the most common time recreational players are hurt by not split stepping is when they go forward. So let's say you get a short ball, right? So your opponent hits the ball short, and you come forward to get it, and then you hit an approach shot, right? So as you're going forward, it is so important that you are not running as your opponent hits. So if you're running forward, and let's say your opponent, and you're still running as your opponent makes contact, this is so common, you'll see players continuing to run, and then the lob goes right over their head. And they're literally running going, oh, there goes the lob over my head, because they didn't stand still. Again, if you're running at, or moving as your opponent hits the ball, what if you're moving in the wrong direction? And since you don't know where your opponent's gonna hit, you gotta become balanced and, and stationary for just a split second. So you're gonna split your feet apart for just a split second, get your bearings, figure out where the ball's gonna go, and then you can, it's like tapping the brakes when you wanna turn around a corner, right? When you're going around a fast corner, or when you're going fast and you're about to get to a corner, you hit the brakes so you can make a sharper turn. It's the same idea. So if you go forward, but then as your opponent hits, you split step, then if they lob, you can immediately start moving back and then you can either hit an overhead or run it down. And the same thing for the passing shots, right? So passing shots are typically hit like this, right? Those are the basic passing shots, down the line, cross court. If you're still moving and your momentum is carrying you forward, it's gonna be a curved line to try to get there. Again, that's like going around a corner too fast in your car. You're running forward, and you're gonna to have to make that move. If you split step as your opponent hits, you can make a direct line to those, and that's gonna be a shorter distance. A straight line is gonna be a shorter distance than a curved line to that ball. I wanna show you those points I was alluding to. First, I'm gonna show you not split stepping. This is a player who hit a ball, feels like they got their opponent in trouble, and then they started moving forward and they're still moving as the opponent hits the ball. And then the second point, you're gonna see the opponent in a very similar situation split step, and you're gonna see how drastic the difference in the outcome is from one player split stepping and one player not split stepping. So to set this up, this player is from Stanford and this player is from Cal. These are actually opponents, right? These are two separate points. So this player is actually this player, right? So you, can, you get the idea. The player on the left here hits a good serve out wide, pulls the opponent off the court. Well, one of the times you should go to the net is when you feel like your opponent is in trouble. So he's actually going to hit the ball into the open court and watch how he immediately starts moving forward. Now, remember, you're going to split step as your opponent hits. And really, the exact timing is you want to split your feet just after they hit. So watch just after the opponent hits the ball, he then splits his feet apart. That allows him to go in any direction. If the 
shot is hit down the line, he can go get it. If the shot is hit cross court, he can go get it. If it's a lob over his head, he can move back. If it if it's at his feet, he can move forward. You can move in any direction from this position. He's balanced. Again, it's a breaking mechanism, so you can slow down it, you know, to see where the ball is going to go, and then you explode in the direction needed. Well, the ball is hit cross court, and he moves in at an angle to cut it off, and he's perfectly on balance. J- just watch how simple this is. He moves in. He split steps, and notice he's split stepping behind the service line because the split step is a when, not a where. The split, you want to split step when your opponent hits the ball, not based on where you are on the court. He split steps as the opponent hits, and then he's perfectly balanced and easily gets to the ball. Now we see his opponent later in the match in a very similar situation. He hits a ground stroke. Now, he actually doesn't get his opponent in as much trouble, but watch the player in white. He's moving forward. Now, remember, he's going to split step. Let's base it off of the player in black. Watch. The ball is contacted, and then he split steps just after. So watch. The ball is contacted. He should be split stepping right now, but he doesn't. He's still running forward, and the ball is going to be hit over to his right, but he can't get there. Remember, if this is like driving a car too fast around a corner, you can't make the turn. So he needs to be right now moving at an angle to get or diagonally to get to this ball. But he can't. He's still moving forward. And even though the ball lands not that far away from him, the ball is not that far from him. He should have been split stepping now and then moving directly to that ball. And he would have easily hit that. It would have been a half volley. Since it was below net level, it would have been smart to keep it in front of him called hold the line. You keep that ball in front of you, and then he could win the point on the next shot. But since he doesn't split step, he continues running. His momentum is still pulling him forward, and he's trying to turn to the right, but he can't because his momentum went forward because he's not split stepping. Here are two high-level players One of them split-stepping, one of them not split-stepping, and you can see a drastic difference in the outcome. Huge shout out to Matt Lynn. He's got an awesome account here on YouTube. I'm gonna link him in the description below. Make sure you give him a sub. But it was easy to see the difference. One player split-stepped, the player in black, Stanford, and when he split-stepped, he could easily change direction to get that volley. And the player in white was going forward, very similar situation, didn't split step, couldn't make the turn. You could see his body trying to turn, but his momentum was carrying him forward. And that is such a common mistake I see recreational players making when going to the net. Go out and practice hitting approach shots, take a lesson with a local pro, have a friend feed you balls, even drop hit balls. You can practice this just drop hitting. Hit an approach shot, go forward and split step. Learn to make that move as your opponent is striking the ball. And then if they hit the ball down the line, if they hit the ball cross court, even if they lob, you'll be able to easily stop and change direction to cover those balls. If you start split stepping as your opponent hits the ball, you're gonna gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy over at twominutetennis.net. You got this.